Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Personal Interest Projects, How When Scholars Use PIP to Re-Engage Students, Accelerate Learning, and Award Credit. My name is Rosie O'Brien Boytek, and I'm the Assistant Executive Director for the Connecticut Association of Schools. Joining us today are Matt Mervis and Liz Ratty from Ed Advance, along with Montville High School teachers and students, who will share with us how Personal Interest Projects, PIP, have impacted teaching and learning over the past year. This exciting program is making a huge difference for students at both high schools and middle schools in Connecticut. So we're excited to have them here to learn more about the program and how more schools can use the Skills 21 PIP curriculum. We have an exciting webinar planned for today, so we're glad you're joining us. This webinar is being brought to you in part by our corporate partners, Horace Mann, College Funding Coach, MCM Fundraising, Justins, and Pullman and Cumley. We thank them for their continuing support of CAS Professional Development for principals and educators in Connecticut. We're very excited to bring you this webinar and glad that you're joining us today. As a reminder, this session will be recorded and posted on the CAS website so you can view it later and share it with your colleagues as well as your faculty and staff. Please use the chat feature as a way to stay actively engaged in the learning during the session and to let us know if you have any technical issues as we will be monitoring the chat. In addition, we will be monitoring the Q&A feature and we'll try to answer as many of your questions as we can during the session. So please be sure to put your questions in the Q&A. It's now my pleasure to formally introduce our presenters for this webinar. Dr. Elizabeth Raddy is a research specialist of Skills 21 at Ed Advance. She was a classroom teacher for 16 years and now works with middle and high school students on challenge-based learning projects. She supports the Skills 21 National Science Foundation research projects and works with teachers and students on developing solutions to real world problems in STEM. Her background is in math education and special education and she currently works with teachers who are learning to teach and engage students in online instruction. Joining Dr. Raddy today is Matt Mervis, Director of Skills 21 at Ed Advance. Matt has worked as an entrepreneur, consultant, and ed tech producer, product developer for nearly 30 years. He has served in roles including classroom teacher, district technology director, professional development specialist, and innovation designer. Matt brings a unique set of skills and experiences to help lead the exceptional team at Skills 21. In addition, please join me in welcoming two of the teachers from Montville High School. This is the second year that they've been teaching the PIP curriculum. Kelly Brooks is an English and Humanities teacher and works with students who are completing Humanities PIP projects. Holly Ann Moriarty is a Science and Mathematics Department Chair at Montville High School. Holly Ann teaches Science and works with students who are completing the STEM PIP. In a few minutes, when we hear from Kelly and Holly Ann, they will be introducing some of their students who will be sharing their projects and experiences that they have had as they completed their PIP projects. I'm especially excited to hear from the students, so let's get started. It's now my pleasure to introduce Matt Mervis from Ed Advance. Take it away, Matt. Awesome. Thanks so much, Rosie. Uh, and a big shout out to the CA CAS team, uh, Rosie and Karen and Bill have just been instrumental in, in pulling this together and absolutely for Kelly and Holly Ann from Montville. We're so thrilled and appreciative of you and your students' time to have this conversation this morning. So let me jump right in. Liz and I are gonna give you just a quick context set so we can get to talking directly um, with the teachers and, and learning from the students as we go. So we'll do a, a quick uh, overview about Skills 21 and PIP, but we'll then dive right into the Montville model. They've done two years of personal interest projects with different emphasis and different strategies. So it'll be really fun and interesting to hear about that perspective. We'll talk to some students about their projects and then um, talk a little bit about middle school exemplars as well. PIP is being used in a wide variety of settings. And so uh, we wanna make sure that we can speak to different audiences and we'll certainly have uh, time for some uh, questions and conversation. Real briefly, Skills 21 is a program at, at, at Advance, the Regional Service Center in Western Connecticut. It is a 20-year-old program, actually 21 years. We've aged quickly during the pandemic. Um, most of the last 12 to 15 years, we've been supported through National Science Foundation and U.S. Department of Ed um, funding to really research the particular treatment of project-based learning that we've done in classrooms and in schools. So over that uh, two-decade period, We've built an, an academy model where students were taking uh, challenge-based courses in STEM, digital media, and entrepreneurship in the 9th, 10th, 11th, and then the 12th grade level, culminating with a capstone project 
which really informed a lot of the work that we did um, around PIP, the personal interest project that we'll discuss today. Uh, Pre-COVID, we would bring about 1,500 students together a few times during the year, and then a large culminating event, a film festival, a student film festival, uh, a pitch competition. We'd have you know, 1,200 kids in the dome of the Oakdale Theater, and uh, COVID has just not been particularly friendly to that model, 50 school districts, kids coming together in an indoor setting. And so Skills 21 has tried to take with our very small, and you know, I think I'm such a lucky person to have such a great team, but we've taken everything that we know about project-based learning, about authentic projects, about tapping into student passions. And during the pandemic, we built out two pretty robust project-based learning um, platforms and curricula for more independent style projects. So the first we'll discuss and mostly discuss today, the personal interest project, which is typically done in a semester to trimester timeframe or as short as even a few weeks during summer school. And then we won't discuss today, but, but a big piece of our work is also in, in uh, that capstone model, especially for schools that are using capstone as part of their uh, mastery-based diploma assessment graduation requirement for next year. Just for context real quickly, you can get a sense of the diverse set of um, settings and context that the personal interest project, that shorter form project is done where students learn, solve, make, or do something that they truly care about. Um, so anywhere from sixth grade enrichment, which is kind of a targeted class, to whole school, middle school, to alternative high school settings, the Montville model that we'll look at today, we're in a couple technical high schools, uh, and we're even doing a new project with the Mass Department of Youth Services in some uh, residential uh, juvenile justice settings. So I've never worked on a project um, that in its in its single instance has found so many different um, niches and that's really exciting to us and I think a signal of how much kids can do when they're uh, challenged and have the resources to support and do that. As I mentioned, we're doing capstone work in a range of school districts as well. Um, and those also kind of come in different flavors and varieties. But let's talk about PIP. I'm gonna hand this over to Dr. Liz Raddy, who is the, the maven and grandmother and mother and all, all things PIP. Um, and uh, will guide us through the next couple slides. Please never refer to me as a grandmother again, Matt. You, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the puppies. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so in the spring of 2020 in March, uh, we were hearing about this COVID thing and it looked like kids were gonna be out of school for, I don't know, two or three weeks. And Matt said, we should really come up with a um, with something for the kids to do in this time. And we were watching what adults were doing as um, you know, this uh, isolation and pandemic and quarantine were setting in and we thought, um, you know, all these adults are learning new skills or, you know, taking out their crafting and their sourdough starters. So we wanted to do something similar for the students. Um, so very quickly, we put together a, um, a curriculum that has three phases, discover, create, and share, where students are uh, asked to learn something, solve a problem, make something, or just do something they've always wanted to do that maybe they learned a little bit about in school and wanted to do more or had nothing to do with school, but uh, wanted to explore deeper. Um, in each phase, there were four, there are four activities that scaffold the um, work from students just starting to explore their passions through, um, they create you know, they do some brainstorming, they do a proposal uh, in the create phase, they're really planning and doing their project and getting feedback about it. And then in the share phase, um, they are, you know, showing their work to an audience, whether, you know, during the pandemic, all of this was done virtually, and there's lots of opportunities for collaboration that can happen um, without actually being face to face. And now that kids are able to be back in school, there's a lot more opportunities for them to collaborate in person. And then they reflect on the process. So uh, I think we're going to turn this over to Kelly to talk about Montville's model. And Kelly, I've just I, I, there's two slides here, one on the credit recovery phase. So, um, you know, you do, we certainly don't need to hit, hit all these bullets. We have them up for folks to look at. But if you want to just chat a little bit about that. And then I think there are four examples of projects that maybe we can speak to in the next few slides. Sure. Thank you. Um, so 
good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm an English teacher here at Montville High School. Last spring, we, like everybody else, we're, we're going into the pandemic. And we, here in Montville, had been working on a hybrid model for most of the year. And we had a large, well, a, a fairly significant percentage of students who were opting to stay fully remote last year. And for part of the year, we had a program that some of the students found to be useful called Educeer, which was an online um, independent study type course. And we had a handful of students who were really struggling with Educeer, who needed more um, guidance, who needed more one-on-one uh, -on -one help and, and motivation and things like that. We saw once we started PIP that the engagement increased significantly. Um, we had students, we did, so when we first started in the spring of 2020, right? No, 2021, I don't even know what year that. Um, in the spring of 2021, yes. Um, we had maybe 15 or so students, we had a little more than that. A lot of students who were fully remote and we said, would you like this option of PIP? We were looking for something that would re-engage the students, help them earn some credit, um, still keeping them connected as well to the, the larger school community. Um, and so we came up with PIP. We talked with Liz and Matt and our administrative team, um, did all of that planning and recruited some teachers and, and here we are. We have some examples of some projects this was last year. This was one that was done by a student named Donovan and he was a senior last year very quick history. Donovan was a very disengaged student um, prior to PIP. We had struggled and worked with him in-house in previous years to try to get him motivated and um, earn his credits so that he could graduate on time. And then the pandemic hit. And we thought Donovan is one of these kids that we really want to target with something like PIP. And we approached him and discussed it with him and he was all for it. Um, he decided he wanted to do something on different types of superchargers because he loved fast driving cars. And so uh, he did need a little bit of help. He needed lots of support towards the end still. I'll be honest, it, this is not always necessarily a, a magic bullet that's going to fix everything. Um, he did need some help, but with that help, he was able to complete a really fantastic project um, and earn his credit. And he did graduate on time with his class. So we were really excited for that. This next one is was also done by a senior, Tracy. And um, Tracy is an incredible, was, well, she graduated, she's an incredibly shy student. Um, and she liked the idea of remote learning, of being able to learn from home. But she also liked this idea of being connected with the rest of us and having something that she was interested in to work towards. So what she did was she replicated the Lotus Temple. Um, and this was really fascinating for us to look at when it was completed because the math that she did for this particular project, she was trying to get it um, to scale, the model to scale and researching different types of um, textures and materials that she could use to create it. Um, she ended up doing a phenomenal piece uh, job on hers as well. And that was really more of an art and math kind of focus for her. Uh, Myra was a sophomore at the time, very motivated. And she took a little bit of a personal interest and wanted to look at art in her African-American culture. And she did a fabulous job of recreating some artistic pieces that were done by famous artists um, and learned a lot about herself and her family's culture in the process. Uh, very worked well independently, was self-motivated, um, and her project focused mainly on art, culture, and history. And then we had a project from one of our students who's here with us, uh, Maciel. This project I am incredibly proud of. Uh, Maciel, went into, she was a sophomore last year when she did this project, she's fully remote, and um, really took this 
hip opportunity as a way for her own personal growth. And she decided to do her project on night terrors and sleep paralysis and some other things that she personally had been struggling with. Um, and in the course of that project, she did some research about the neuroscience behind sleep. Uh, she put together a bunch of notes and not only did she have sort of that um, traditional research-based approach to her project, she also added a creative piece and wrote poems and stories about some of her own personalized experiences with these challenges. Um, and she did a phenomenal job. She learned some coping strategies along the way. She found support. She, I think she gained a, a little bit of confidence in um, being vulnerable and putting herself out there in a topic that a lot of people don't know a lot about. Um, and she, she did a great, great job. And she ended up earning her credit and liked it so much that she decided to take PIP again this year um, when we offered it as a full course here at Montville High School. Which is awesome. And we're looking yes. forward to hearing how it's going from her in just a moment as we talk about the, the three courses that are currently being offered. Kelly, real quickly, before we move on to this year, um, do you want to say just a little bit about the team structure? That was really interesting how the teachers um, kind of organize themselves around the students for this cohort. Yeah, sure. It was a little um, fumbly <laughs> at first because it was last year, this was done completely remotely. So we never, as the teacher group, we never got to meet with the students um, face to face. It was all done through Zoom. Um, our administrators, our principal put out the call, if you will, and said that uh, she was planning on introducing this idea and wanted to know if there were any teachers interested in working with her on it. And so there was about seven of us, I think, who showed interest. We had a math teacher, um, an electives teacher, a couple of elective teachers, uh, science, English. Uh, our library media specialist was part of the team. Um, and we just came together. So we would meet as a team, as an adult team, we would meet once a week um, to kind of touch base and see what was going on. And we scheduled it so that the students had um, a pit block. I think it was four, four, four or five blocks, I think, were pit blocks. And so they met with a designated teacher for that amount of time and worked on their project. And then we also assigned specific advisors to each student. Um, so I worked specifically with Maciel and a couple other students, depending on what their projects were. We had a student who was working on um, guitar, wanted to learn guitar, and we happened to have our music teacher as part of the team. So he mentored her for her project specifically at times. Um, but for the most part, they, we met as, as a whole group. And we tried really hard to build, even though it was remote, we really tried to build a sense of community with, within all of the PIP participants, um, worked on some SEL things as well. And um, yeah, it just, it worked. When we did it this year, because of the scheduling with teachers, it was a little bit off. Um, our principal did ask again, if anybody was interested in doing it again this year, um, Holly Ann and myself were two of those people who said, yes, we definitely wanna keep up with that. Um, and some of the other teachers, while they enjoyed their experience, just said it wasn't going to fit in their schedule this year with their other regular class load. So, yeah, yeah. great, great you know, very innovative, you know, marshalling of resources and realigning people and teams. It was really yeah. it was great to hear about. Um, and OK, good. So that's a nice segue, uh, sequence segue. There we go. That's the word <laughs> um, to this year. So tell us a little bit about what's different, what you guys are doing this year, what it looks like. So this year it was opened up, PIP was opened as a regular course offering. So any student who was ninth through 11th grade last year um, was invited or, or allowed to select PIP this year to earn credits. We decided to offer it in three different areas. So there was a humanities PIP, a STEM PIP, and then a half year course of an elective PIP. Um, and students determined which they would like to go for and registered for that particular PIP for this current year. 
So the STEM and the humanities PIPs have about 13 to 15 or so students each in them. Um, the elective I think has maybe about 10. Uh, that one is still only running a half year. The, the STEM and the humanities are going to run full year courses. Um, and a typical class looks very much like a typical class. Um, we meet every other day for a block. The class comes in, we have our normal routine. Um, we do check-ins and things like that. And then um, we have our little initiation where I'll review with the, with the students where we are in the process and the PIP process and sort of expectations for the day. Some days we might be working on our um, TikTok time management piece. Uh, once that was done, then we move on. And, and a lot of it now is independent research. The students come in and they're ready to go. We, we are lucky because of the pandemic, we became a one-to-one -one district. So all the students have their own devices and Chromebooks. So that does help a lot for, for a course like this and being able to have access to resources um, you know, at your fingertips not have to fight over them that's helpful mm -hmm. uh, uh students come in and they they work for their block their block at the end of the block uh we have them blog every day they do a daily blog which is basically just a little reflection about what they did that day challenges they might have faced how they overcame them and then their next steps what they plan on doing next time so there's a little bit of continuity and uh, a vision for the, the long-term goal. Uh, how are they aligned? So we have, for lack of a better term, rubrics. Um, really, there's just guidelines set up. And we do, we are, right now, we're doing it as more of a, a feedback approach, if you will, a standards-based approach, rather than um, an actual grade assignment like a traditional classroom might, might look but we have um, expectations and rubrics for STEM projects, humanities and elective courses. And then we have one that covers 21st century skills that applies to all three classes. And we have the students um, at various points throughout the quarter, throughout the year, they do a self-reflection based on the rubric, looking back at their project and their process thus far and seeing what they might've already done uh, to address that criteria and then there's a space for teacher feedback. I conference with each of the students. We go over the rubric. We talk about their projects, uh, their progress so far, and kind of their next steps. Awesome. That's great. And we'll, we'll pick up that last question, I think, a little bit after we've got a chance Perfect. to uh, talk to the students. I think would be great. So let me just bring up this next slide. Um, but then I'll stop sharing my screen so we can actually you know, kind of see your, see your kids a little bit closer. Um, but we'd love for the students to tell us just a little bit about uh, what they're doing and how it's going, maybe each individually. And then we'll, we'll kind of just pepper around some questions to students about things like, how's PIP different from other classes? What are you liking about PIP? What's challenging and how it might influence you? But let me go ahead and stop sharing my screen. There we go. Ah, uh, good morning, everybody. <laughs> That's great. So I'll mute here, but if you, if each student wants to introduce themselves and tell us a little bit about their project and how it's going, that would be fantastic. Oh, hi, I'm Olivia. And I'm speak up just a little bit. Make oh, sure. um, I'm Olivia. What's else? What, is it? Mm -hmm. you're, what year are you? Oh, I'm a senior. And what's your PIP project? And I'm for, for my PIP project, I am doing criminal psychology. But specifically, I want to explore what drives a person to the point of murder, like what clicks in their brain to make them go that far. That's what I want to explore for my project. So. Very cool. And that's a theme, I will say, across <laughs> tips. true crime, you know, right in that zone. Neat, Olivia. Yes. Okay, great. Hi, I'm Madeline. Um, my project is more so based on... <laughs> Excuse me, mm. <laughs> Not a worry, not a worry at all. In some ways, we've all through Zoom got an opportunity to really get a better flavor for what the announcements 
look and sound like from school to school. I, I think this is what keeps us alive and real, you know, just seeing what's really going on out there in the real world. But um, thank you guys for being here. And it's I can't wait to continue hearing about your project. So hopefully your announcements are over and I'll turn off again. <laughs> Good night. Um, my name is Maddie. My project is more so like around computers and like a website. So my grandfather, he works at a like programming basis. It's like kind of his job. And he has special access to different kinds of um, like technologies online for this kind of thing. So I'm working with him and we're going to be making a website where it's going to kind of give information, side pieces, how a guitar will work and more structuralized ways to learn how to play it because I've always wanted to play, but I've never had the kind of motivation to do it because of how difficult it is. And I've never really found um, an online website or teacher or any in-person teachers who are really like as passionate as I am in this area. So I've never really found something that gave me a spark until this project kind of gave me that opportunity to teach people and teach myself at the same time. That's for your STEM? Yes. Maddie's taking, this year she's taking STEM PIP and a humanities PIP. So that is her STEM project. Yeah. Maddie, do you want to tell us real quickly about, about your humanities project or is that early days? I don't mind. Uh, so for my humanities, I couldn't really find something. So I'm doing something kind of like Olivia's. It's a true crime kind of basis, but a little bit different. It's going to be the mindsets between a detective like the detective's mindset, like what drives them, like what makes them think so differently and how that feels like goes to them. And then the difference between like a serial killer and like what kind of drives them and like how their lives kind of correspond and like relate to each other, but also are very, very different clearly. Um, then I'm kind of making it into like a movie for like, kind of like a fun way to kind of see like the differences between like actual people acting out the parts is what I'm going to do. And I already have people who agree to be in it. So it's going to be kind of like a fun project for this one. Very cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Marcia. And for my humanities project, I'm, I'm doing it on like body dysmorphia and body image and like self like appreciation because I struggle a lot with that so like I took this year to like kind of like get myself to you know get out of my comfort zone and try to make myself you know like love myself more and kind of open up to that type of stuff that's great what a neat project idea wonderful yeah so let's let's just kind of a couple of questions around for all of you um Maddie you mentioned your grandfather so what's it been like working with a family member on a school project that at that level of depth, which is kind of a theme we see in PIP. A lot of projects wind up being pretty deep with a family or a, you know someone kind of extended family member. So him and I have always been kind of close and I've always kind of been very intrigued with the kind of technology he has to do because due to COVID, he is working at home. So he has all of his basis like at his fingertips in the comfort of his home that's very close to where I live anyways so it has driven us closer and it uh we've never really found something that we bonded over other than the fact he's my grandfather so this kind of thing actually drives us a lot closer realizing we do have a lot more in common than we figured we did in the beginning <laughs> neat how about any other homeschool connections or family involvement or have you let people into your projects? Have you kept them away from your projects? <laughs> like my parents, I kind of like, like my mom, she also suffers a lot with like her appearance and the way she is. So like I tell her about my project to kind of help her like nudge her in like the same direction I'm going. So she like accepts like, hey, I look this way and like I can embrace that. Neat, what a nice connection, yeah. Mm -hmm. Olivia, how about you? Um, I mean, I would really help my mom so I'm not hurting people. <laughs> um, uh, I haven't really brought up my project to my family. I really never thought of it. Um, I know my mom's always at work, so I don't really talk like a lot about school to her. So it's kind of like a thing for me to do in my time. It's something I've always been interested in learning about. So something that I decided I wanted to do. 
So. Yeah, totally. It makes makes perfect sense, right? I mean, uh, some sometimes it's a fit because they can be a resource, and sometimes um, it's not, which is great. And if you want to say a little bit about how how PIP so far has been kind of different from your other classes, so. Hip versus the other, like, I feel like regular, like, elective classes is more so getting you through the class, especially for the kids who aren't motivated. And especially for me, I've never really been driven to the idea of, like, a basic classroom. You kind of just listen to somebody lecture the entire time. I'm very independent and having to just sit down and just listen. I zone out a lot and then I kind of, my grades end up falling because I just can't focus in such an environment because people get distracted and people get loud and it just, it just a mess with me. So this kind of project allows me to be very individualized and I kind of get to tune out into my own world and I get to just focus and I get to just think and I get to take it home with me. So instead of having homework, it's work that I actually want to do at home. And I actually think I'm instead of um, being at home, like, oh, I have to do my homework. It's like, oh, what can I do? I can do something I'm interested in. And it's like, it doesn't feel like work anymore. It feels fun, but I'm still earning an actual credit for a class, but I'm actually learning something at the same time. Nate. Nate. Other perspectives on that? Similar or different? Um, I, I like, okay, different from my other classes, we get our own freedom in this class to choose literally whatever we're interested in to study. And what I like is that I have a hard time focusing and I am a big procrastinator. So if I don't want to do it, I'm not going to do it. And with this class, we have our own like time management, but at the same time, Ms. Brooks is there making sure we're actually doing the work. So it's like, we have our freedom, but there's also still someone there guiding us, but not so close to the point where we feel like, like children, like learning how to like ride a bike or something. Like we're on our own, but she's still there as like a safety net if like we panic, which is what I like because I struggle with like keeping myself on task, but. I have to say as the teacher, I would not have known that about Olivia because when I see her in PIP, she is on it. She's been so engaged and getting her stuff done, all three of them. I, I wouldn't have thought that you would have said that yeah. about your other classes if I didn't. I just actually enjoy what I do in this class. So that's awesome. That's why Good. I like to do it. Yay. And I want to get the, your name right too. I apologize. I missed it a little bit. Is it is it Massiel or? It's Massiel. Massiel. A little French, right? Massiel. Spanish. 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 Oh, sorry. Spanish. Oh, Very different. European. So Massiel, how about for you? How's this class feel either similar or different from your other classes? Well, I like that it's like taught me a lot more independence. Like I didn't get that a lot in my other classes because like teachers always like want things to be a specific way. Like they'd be like, oh, do this this way or like it's not going to be right. And then here they kind of give you like that freedom to like make this your way. Like you're showing this the way you want to make this, not how like this teacher is making this. Like you can take whatever idea, whatever you want and like voice it. In other classes, your ideas and like stuff like that, you don't really get to voice them out. You kind of have to keep them to yourself. And here, you get that opportunity to like take that and make it into something you can be proud of and show to other people, which like other classes, you don't really get to do that. You kind of like sit and do what the teacher says. You know, I'm, I'm wondering, that, that makes a lot of sense, but I'm wondering, has any of your peers or maybe Ms. Brooks, you might speak to this too, has anyone sort of come up to you and said, how could you be learning something or how can you earn a credit if you're just working on something that you care about if you if you got that i see nodding you want to say a little bit about like how you answer that question when people pose it to you so when people ask me specifically that question i kind of like to remind them that no matter what class we're in we're, we always have topic there's always a topic in each of the classes like for in English class, there's always going to be a book we're reading, and then we focus on that book. It's not always a general topic. In this class, we're doing the exact same thing, except we're picking the topic. We're picking what we're doing, and maybe it's different from everybody else, but we're all doing the same thing, just different paths, and that's fine, and it's the same thing as any other class, except we're pretty much our own teachers. We're doing everything by ourselves. We're doing the research. Any other teacher would be, we have Miss Brooks the safety net, like Olivia said, but we are our own teachers, and I like that independence factor, and that's what a lot of people seem to miss. Brooks, how about you when, when someone asks you that question? You know, the kids are really learning, they're researching, you know, true crime murders and Yeah. Yeah. It that from the teacher end, 
that came up is a question from my colleagues when, especially last year when PIP was first introduced. Um, and my answer is, is very much kind of what the girls were saying. To me, learning is learning. Um, I, I personally feel like um, in some ways, traditional, if you will, education, traditional schooling has gotten very um, boxed in and very prescribed and very standardized. Um, and I think that's a little bit of a detriment to some of these younger kids who recognize the fact that learning is, is natural. It's an organic human thing. Um, if you think about infants and toddlers, that's, that's how we grow. That's how we develop is we just learn. We learn by doing, we learn by trying and taking risks and, and putting ourselves out there and, and stretching outside of our comfort zones. Um, and so, you know, I, I invite colleagues in, you're welcome to come see the class. You're welcome to come see what they're working on and, and what they're doing. And it's not just uh, a waste of time, if you will. Um, I, I find this learning somewhat to be more valuable than what I might teach in a traditional class as well. Fantastic. Great. Good timing, Ashley, as announcements come on. Um, so I think we, we probably will get a couple of questions that will come over chat. And uh, maybe if a few students, I know some students got to run, but if, you, if anyone can stick around, we can, we can um, pick those up. Or Rosie, is there anything kind of burning before we move on? Yeah, actually, I have a couple of questions for our students before we move on. And so I just want to say, you three girls have so much confidence and it's just such a joy to listen to you speak. Um, you amaze me. But I'm curious because um, all three of your projects sound so amazing, but I'm wondering if you're thinking as you move and start thinking about your career or going on to college, is there anything that you're learning right now that either is going to influence what you want to do later in your life or skills that you've learned that you might take to college or into a future job? Um, I actually, because of this project, I always wanted to be a, a makeup artist, but once I started doing this project, I really became interested in like the criminal psychology um, topic. And I was watching these interrogation videos and I just thought it would be so interesting to put myself in the shoes of the interrogator and like just be able to just recognize somebody's body language and just know exactly what they're thinking and how nervous they are just by how they're acting and then just know what questions to ask and just to get the right information and then figure out what's going on in their brain just by asking these questions. And so I think I might be like leaning towards like being a criminal psychologist. That's really like piquing my interest right now. So I'm like really grateful for that because it's pretty interesting. It, it sounds like it. Like if you can figure out what's going on in people's brains, I mean, yeah. like, what's going on in mine? <laughs> not, really. not that I'm going to murder anybody or anything, but I but know. Very exciting. What about um, you, the other two of you? Any? So my the field that I was going into that I'm applying to college for is I want to do get my bachelor's, then I want to do um, law studies. But that's because of the fact I like change. I like to cause change. I, I like to embrace change. It's just change is just something that is just something I see in a positive light. So when I'm making a website, I feel like that's something that I can introduce and kind of go off of and give to schools for like different learning bases when it comes down to the guitar for especially. Um, I feel like my STEM project, especially when I make that, I feel like I can further develop that as I go along, even after I submit it as my final project, I feel like it'll never be my final project because if, if I'm so invested in it, then I always know there's going to be always room for improvement. Yeah. So just because like the law studies of this, it's just both are going to provide change, whether that's in schooling, learning, anything like that. It's just something that drives me. And that's something I feel like I can carry with me, whether it's my career in the future or not. So exciting, so exciting. But just to listen to you guys talk about the skills and how, how this class has changed your thinking is great. Maciel, what, what about you? Well, like before PIP, I like was letting go of all writing, stuff like that. Cause I noticed that like, I didn't have anybody there to like coach me or be like, hey, keep going. Like hearing people like see my project and stuff like that. 
that kind of like motivated me and kept me going, like holding on to like that, like trying to help people and trying to be there. So like, I kind of like opened back up that like door of like being a social worker, a therapist, a school psychologist, like being there for people and trying to help. So I kind of like like that it like opened that up for me because now I feel like I could really go into this. Like I could hold on to this dream. Right. And, you know, if you can teach people how to love themselves and to take care of themselves, that's so important. We we need so much of that in our schools right now, um, not just for students, but for teachers and administrators, for all anybody working in schools and probably your your family as well. So, no, that's a really important um, topic, too. One more question and then I'm going to turn it back to you. But I'm just curious. Um, if you were to mentor younger students doing this work or even, you know, kids that in their own grade that haven't done it before, what advice would you give them as they're starting out doing a PIP project? Um, oh, I would definitely say don't think about it too much at first because that was my problem. I had no idea where to even start. I actually changed my project because it just was not going how I wanted it to. And I couldn't get my thoughts like to focus on that one project. I kept branching out into other like topics that related. And it just, I couldn't get my mind set on that one thing I wanted to focus on at first. But you can take the first couple of weeks even to just figure out where you want to set your mind. Because if you just try to start off with the one thing and then you just ignore all your other interests that start to like slide in, you're not gonna end up liking the project that you were working on and you're not gonna to wanna to do it. So I think just, you know, actually listen to what you're interested in and don't just try to choose something because you think that's just to get it done or something. You know, actually take advantage of the class that you're being offered and choose something you wanna do. That's something that I'd say. So the way I would say is kind of, don't confide yourself to just the basics. Don't think that you, don't think too much about it in a way, kind of, it's about your interests, it's about your focus, it's about your topics. So kind of just think in um, a basic schooling term, you're never gonna have fun with it, just like she was saying. You kind of have to think outside your comfort zone and think about the most little things because the little things can turn into something that you didn't even know you had some interest in the first place. Like kind of learn to drive yourself in different areas, learn to like not do something that you would on a regular, but like also don't go so far out of the box that you're gonna end up having a project that makes you miserable because you feel like it get you a better grade. Because at the end of the day, the grade's always gonna be the same whether you like the project or not. Just kind of do something that makes you happy. Well, I kind of, when I first did it, I was kind of like, if I would tell somebody else, like, I'd be like, think outside of that box. Like that box that school puts you in, kind of like put a door on that box and like open it. Like kind of like let yourself out, let your mind like, just like draw you to whatever you feel like you truly like. Like don't really like stress like over things because if you stress too much, you know, like your mind's gonna just scatter away. So it's better if you just kind of like relax yourself and kind of like let yourself go to what you feel truly like you want to like make into a project. I think that's so exciting and so, so important to think outside of the box, to find your passion, to, you know, let it evolve, you know, who knows where it's going to take you and, and because it's something that you're really interested in, it's all the more important for you to be able to do that. I just have to, I'm going to say one more thing and then I'm going to turn it back over to you. I just heard you say something, Madeline, that was so important and that is not that you all didn't have things important, but, but your comment about instead of um, taking your homework home to do, you were excited to be able to take your work home that you wanted to do and enjoy it when you get home so I just I think that probably for me resonated the most of why this this pep project is so important so thank you for sharing it I'm going to get off and um, we'll continue but nice meeting you guys yeah and I'll just echo Rosie's comments we're really just so appreciative of your willingness to kind of share your experiences and uh, for all that you've done to dive into the work and to work with such an awesome teacher too. I and mean, we, we had two hours that had you start talking about Ms. Brooks and uh, how she orchestrates class to make that all work. But it's obviously a great, great team effort there. So thank you. All righty, I'm gonna share my screen back here. Um, Kelly, was there anything else you wanted to say before we jump back in? Oh. I don't think so. Okay, great. Um, there might be, depending on what comes next, if I remember. Perfect. All right. 
So um, I do know uh, that we had we had we had shared. Certainly, we were really excited about Monville, and I have to say, you know, if I go back to that sort of one of the earliest slides where we talk about all the different ways that PIP is being used, it's so heartening to us because, as Liz said, the pandemic hit, and we very quickly. I mean, the the curriculum and the videos have all been iterated and they've improved over time, but we very quickly stood up the initial platform, you know, just because um, we knew that students working in our program and students that were new to us, uh, that it would be a helpful and beneficial thing. And they knocked it out of the park, but then to see all the different ways over the last, you know, more the second year, um, how schools have modified and used it to meet their own unique purposes in Montville's just one of the most stellar examples we have out there. So we're, we're super thankful for, um, you know, both the teachers and students, but also, I, you know, a shout out to the superintendent and the principal, um, you know, who really had the vision to kind of take this uh, away. So let's talk just real quickly about middle school. Um, we're seeing a couple different models in the middle school level and all with, you know, all sorts of interesting degrees of success. Um, so one that we're seeing quite a bit this year are some wider whole school implementations in the what I need or what I need now block. Sometimes they have a, a different name as well, but these are typically, um, you know, anywhere between 50 or longer minute blocks where um, students are doing a combination of different things. Uh, they aren't a straight academic class, but they're usually hosted or um, in an academic area teachers um, program, but students are really still passion, you know, kind of tapping into their passions and doing something that is, is personal to them. We also see more um, individualized, so it's still quite a few students being served, but they're being served in rotations in things like X blocks. Um, STEM project-based learning classes, library media rotations, and technology. Um, so very often those will be hundreds of students, like a whole school model, but they're just done in uh, a certain sort of applied area classes. We have uh, schools doing what I would call an integrated academic model of PIP. Um, so that's a little bit more like what Monfil is doing at the high school level. It's you know kind of in an academic area teacher's class. Sometimes the PIP is situated in that academic domain. So students think about something they want to learn, solve, make, or do that has a humanities lens or a STEM lens. Uh, and then sometimes it's, it's just strictly rooted in the student's passion. And then we see um, certainly some enrichment. There's a tradition of this style of project, um, often called genius hour projects or 20% projects. Um, that we'll see, um, you know, folks in the kind of enrichment community be involved and interested in. We'll just give you a couple more visuals of some projects, and then actually I'll log in and, and give you a flavor of what the platform looks like. But you can sort of see the architecture of the curriculum in these final project portfolios. Um, this is a student from two years ago from Woodbury Middle School um, who learned how to skateboard, but also built her skateboard. So there was design, there was mechanical design, design thinking. Um, she worked also with a family member. So it was a really nice homeschool collaboration um, for Rosie as well. But you'll notice the discover, create, and share are the phases that the students do in each of the curriculum, each of the curriculum activities go into those three buckets. And then the post area that the students mentioned is sort of that blog where you can either do daily exit tickets or just an ongoing um, catch up on the project. Um, we've had a few, this came out of City Hill Middle School. We've had a, a few really great um, kind of environmentally situated projects came out of City Hill and we do run an, a, a free online competition for the PIP. So anyone can submit their PIP. And this was one of the winners from two years ago. Um, this was a lot of fun. This was early days of the pandemic. Uh, so good news with Gracie was uh, just a, you know, let's talk about positive things that are going on. And so she developed a, um, you know, essentially an ongoing news reel. Uh, and there were a number that came out of, I think of another one of Gracie's friends did a really fun um, signing. She learned, Hey there, Delilah, which I think has like 16 verses and learned sign language by signing that song. But again, in each one of these projects, they'll go through four activities in each phase that kind of help move them through the project. Um, Backwater Reviews was fun. This was a middle school project of um, 
Brandon's favorite 90s bands. So he really wanted to work on his writing and his editing, uh, but on a topic that he was really passionate about. And so uh, this was this was a fun one as well. So that just gives you a little bit of a, of a some more additional visuals of the projects in their in their final state. And let's show you kind of how they get there. I'm going to log on real quickly. Um, and if any of my fellow panelists, if you guys can still see the screen, I think should be good. Um, we use Google Apps. Uh, so schools that are Google Apps schools, basically the students use the Google account to log on to PIP. Um, this is a summer PIP domain, but I'll share at the very end the, the main personal interest project domain. Anyone's welcome to sign on to that and kind of kick the tires and see what it looks like. But here again is the discover, create, and share phases. Um, tons of video. So uh, Liz was our original uh, actor for PIP and um, each activity, each phase, the overview for the entire PIP project has a video to support it. So that if students are working at home, working at school, um, you know, the teachers are always there, but when PIP started, the teachers were, were really in a kind of compromised position. So we wanted to make sure that every task that students would do was supported with a video. So if I were to look at the discover phase, there's the find my passions, learn, solve, make, do, they pick their project, and then they submit a proposal. In the create phase, they have a research plan, a time management plan. They do a pitch. We've had a lot of fun with students do a couple um, videos during the project where they're pitching their idea, pitching it to a friend, getting feedback, and then the opportunity to blog about the project throughout the entire process. And then in the final phase, they write their kind of final personal bio. They do a final trailer, which is the video that you see on all the home pages, a final pitch, and a final reflection. So that's the kind of architecture. Um, now, the way it actually works, if a student were to do their find my passions, these are marked green because it means that the students completed it. Here again, for every activity, there's a video that walks them through the activity. There's very often an artifact, a templated artifact that shows them what they'll be doing. So they're able to make a copy of that in their Google Drive folder and then complete the find my passions. You'll notice here input from those you knew well, friends, family, of the 12 PIP activities, um, eight of them force a collaborative task. So students are either challenged to work with a family member or a peer or a parent, because um, we really want these projects to be independent but collaborative. And we, we see that really all over the place. And then this one's already submitted, but you can see what it looks like for students to submit their artifact. So they'll go in, they have an opportunity to change the image, write a reflection, they browse their Google Drive folder, add and submit. And what's kind of neat is that as they're moving through each activity, learn, solve, make, do, pick a project, essentially as they complete these, if I click over to view project, it's building a portfolio for them as they go. So if we look over to the discover phase now, this is what the attachments look like as they move through. And then when they get all the way to that final phase, here's the, the blogging area, the very final phase, you can see those last activities. They write the overview about themselves, their project, they upload a logo, and they um, present a trailer for a video. And we support you know, all aspects of the project through PD and coaching as the students do that work. But it's kind of a neat curriculum, rolls up into portfolio, all self-directed under one environment um, with a, a, a teacher dashboard as well so that teachers can see where students are, provide feedback, and um, move along in concert with them. So it's a very quick snapshot of the, of the actual platform, but we wanted you to be able to see that. And I think in the interest of time, because we may have some questions, I'm just going to share what else is here. But these are things that, you know, probably be best to look at a little bit on one's own time. But uh, one of the resources that we share often with teachers um, are just the kind of foundation skills. So as you do each of these activities, there's lots of skills that they hit. But Liz has done a nice job mapping those skills, uh, those activities to different skills. And then the Montville model, they then build on top of that, right, with these STEM and humanities and 21st century rubrics, um, which they use to give more credit specific, content specific feedback. But just know that this is here for you if um, you'd like to kind of see what that foundation looks like. 
As I mentioned, anyone's welcome to sign up for a teacher account at pip.skills21.org. You just sign up as a teacher, use your Google Apps account if you have it. If not, we're happy to work with you to find another method for you to get in to look at the curriculum. Um, when you log in the teacher, you get to an empty dashboard, but under the teacher's name, there is a student view where you can see the, see the curriculum. All right, I, <laughs> we probably should have given ourselves two hours and we just have about four minutes left. But um, Rosie, I know you've been monitoring. I don't know if there's any kind of high profile critical questions that we can address real quickly. Um, yeah, there's um, one that got answered in the chat, but people may not be able to see the chat if they're listening to this later. And that has to do with the cost of PIP. Can you just talk a little bit about that and how people can get started if they're interested? Yeah, you bet, absolutely. So um, the PIP platform and curriculum is $25 a student. Um, the, the Montville model is a little bit different because if you were to actually look at Montville's PIP, rather than going to pip.skills21.org, we go to montville.skills21.org where we've built a custom version of the project. So some schools, it winds up being you know, a slightly higher price point uh, depending on what they need in terms of collaboration. But we've tried to keep it affordable. I mean, Skills 21 is part of uh, at Advance. We're a nonprofit. We are not a software company, but we just need to be able to help sustain the project so that we can help um, support more students. So yeah, $25 a student, and that includes um, student coaching as well as any professional development and support. Great, thank you. And um, Kelly, I'd like to ask you, now that you guys, I can see you back on again. Hi, students. Um, but I'd like to ask you um, if you have any suggestions for people who are thinking about wanting to get started with uh, the PIP program, um, how things that you've learned that you might not have thought of before, or um, anything that surprised you doing this as far as, you know, you didn't anticipate it as a benefit or something that you, you noticed. Um, yeah, I think definitely the biggest suggestion I would have is patience and uh, a willingness to try. Uh, this was a, a bit of a stretch for some of us teachers as well, because it does take us away from uh, some of that traditional model of a classroom that we were used to. Um, but I've found I've enjoyed it incredibly. Um, it's really kind of uh, it reignited a bit of a passion for myself in teaching as well, believe it or not, to see what these kids are doing on their own um, with just that support. Like I really love just being that safety net, as Olivia said, rather than the expert, if you will. Um, it's been really a learning experience for me as well. And I think really the, the biggest takeaway is just be patient, be patient. You have to be willing to try. You have to kind of um, loosen the, the strings a little bit, if you will. I know for me, a big deal was that we did have such great support from the superintendent and our principal at the time. So I felt confident as the teacher letting go of some of the, the, um, the training that I was indoctrinated with. Um, and I, I imagine there's a lot of skills that these students are learning that would, would fit under the curriculum that they you normally would be teaching in humanities or in science or whatever, that just comes from um, context, the context of the learning that you're doing. And I can't, I can't think of anything more valuable than learning about something that's really important through something that you're passionate about. Yeah, yeah, and I've actually learned a lot too of work with the students and learning new programs and getting information for them and finding resources. We have a student who might be doing a fashion project. I wrote a grant to try to get a sewing machine for her to do that project. So I mean, there's, it's it's been a great experience, I think, for the teachers involved and the students. I highly recommend it. And I would say, uh, just to add on to what Matt said before in terms of the cost, I don't know exactly the cost that Montville is paying, but I will say it's worth every penny. Um, it has been worth every penny and the support, even the technical support. We had some glitches with our launch pad at the beginning of the year. Uh, Gary is a member of their team. He was contacting me. We Zoomed a couple of days in a row, very prompt, got it taken care of. Things were resolved very quickly. So definitely worth the investment. 
Terrific. And, and I can tell it's definitely worth, worth the investment. Um, Matt, I have one question for you, and that is once students are vaccinated and maybe we can get past this um, COVID pandemic, do you have any plans even maybe later this year for students getting together in person to share their projects? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so we are going to um, do something on June 3rd this year, um, but we're going down from you know, 1500 students to about 300. So we are trying to find a way to get a footprint back into in person programming with students, and then see if there's a way that we can scale that. So yeah, so the last two years, um, we've done fully online challenges and competitions, um, including a PIP competition, but we are, we are hoping to bring that back, we plan to bring that back this year for a small number of students, and then we'll kind of reassess engage from there so and anyone can uh, reach out to me um, around that is uh, my last name is just mervis m-e-r-v-i-s so i'm mervis at ed advance uh, e-d-a-d-v-a-n-c-e dot org i guess i should have had that on a slide <laughs> but, that's okay you can drop it in the chat too we can actually okay. post it um along with when we post the recording. So if you joined us late, we will be posting the slides and the recording and the rubric. And so people can see that later or use it with your staff if you wanna to try to get a program started at your school. Last words, anything that you would like to add before I close this out? So on behalf of Liz and, and I and the team and at Advance, I just really, again, wanna thank um, Kelly and, and thank all three of the students so much for the time. And thanks CAS, again, Rosie, Karen, Bill, um, such a great, great job kind of pulling this all together. So we're, we're really appreciative to be part of the conversation. Well, and you guys are great to work with too. And what a wonderful webinar. I've just been glued to listening to all of you talk about the phenomenal things that you're doing with PIP. And so I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Um, Kelly, Liz, Matt, and students, um, Olivia, uh, Madeline, and Maciel, I am so proud of you and just thank you so much for sharing your work with us today. So keep up the great work. You're awesome. And um, thank you. Yeah, thanks for joining us today. It's great. And um, if anybody's interested, check, you know, contact Matt, contact Liz at Ed Advance. And uh, thanks again. And before we go, I just want to remind you that we do have a registration open now for two CAST webinars that will be happening in the next month both of which are designed to help student, help school leaders contend with stressful landscapes of the education these days. First one is on November 30th at 4 p.m. Former principal, author, coach, and consultant, Dr. William Summers will do a one hour webinar called You Can't Give What You Don't Have. Um, he will be sharing skills and strategies that administrators need to prepare them to respond to specific challenges that they're currently facing, such as volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. And then on December 16th at 9.30 a.m., we will welcome Fairfield University's Dr. Paula Gill Lopez, who will share her expertise on the what, why, and how of self-care. Links to register for these workshops appear on the screen and will be dropped into the chat. Once again, I wanna thank our corporate partners, Horace Mann, College Funding Coach, MCM Fundraising, Justins and Pullman and Cumley for their continuing support of CAS professional development for principals and all educators in Connecticut. I'd also like to thank all of you for joining us today. This webinar has been recorded and will be posted for future viewing on the CAS website. Please share the link with your colleagues once it's posted. And again, thank you to our presenters and to all of you for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of the day and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>